We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the radio show discussing the honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Mike Lucci. He's the vice president of policy for the Illinois Poly- Policy Institute. And uh, Mike, an interesting piece uh, late this week in the Chicago Reader. This is after a couple. This a couple days after uh, Tiny Dancer gave his checker speech before the city council. A uh, piece by Derek Clifton, the Chicago Reader. Sorry, doesn't cut it, Ron, but your resignation might. Uh, Mr. Clifton writes, among other things. It's not enough for Emmanuel to insist change starts with us when he's refused to face the man in the mirror for years, nine months after winning re-election, and he sounds every bit the campaign politician, but a hollow shell of a public servant. It shouldn't take this much for a mayor to finally say, I'm sorry, and pledge to do better. Um, the, The Mia Culpe gave Chicagoans just before a fateful runoff. And Clifton concludes that the starting with us and doing better starts with Rahm Emanuel humbly turning over the reins to someone else. Well, I think we've seen an interesting model with Emmanuel where, uh, you know, he's a pretty stone cold figure, tough guy. And then once there's an electoral issue, such as the runoff that he faced uh, with Chuy Garcia, then you see sort of a softer image of him. You see a, you see a, a different Rahm Emanuel. And that's what we saw with this more recent case also, um, you know, very stone-faced and strong until finally, like, there's a lot of political noise coming up against what happened with the police department, with how it was handled, and then you get the mea culpa after it becomes uh, clear that, you know, people aren't just going to stand for this. And so that's a, a different model of leadership than what a lot of people are used to, where a leader gets out in front of things, a leader provides a vision and does it before the fact rather than constantly after the fact of being rebuked or whatever the wherever the punishment he might feel is coming. Yeah, based on Rahm's acting ability, one thing's for certain, Ari would never represent him in Hollywood. Uh, now, to add to the conversation, we're joined by Mays Jackson. Mays Jackson is a political commentator on WVON Radio in Chicago. He's also the political editor of the Chicago Defender. Mays, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dan. So it's been an eventful week. Um... Where do you see things politically right now? Because it's not just the Laquan McDonald and Ronnie Johnson and Philip Coleman cases. It's also the prospect of another teacher strike. It's the continued financial death spiral of the city. It seems like everything is crumbling around Tiny Dancer. And this should be the impetus for a groundswell for recall, in my humble estimation. Is that what you see happening? You know, Dan, I am... As a political uh, political consultant and a veteran here in Chicago, I hear the calls for it. I'm not sure if the recall is going to happen. As you know, State Representative LaShawn Ford is proposing a bill, but I've yet to see a recall bill that would allow Chicagoans the opportunity to recall the mayor with a 15 percent with 15 percent of the last vote, which would be about 90,000 votes, uh, 90,000 signatures. I have no doubt that there would be 90,000 signatures to have a recall election. What I don't think is there is the political will for the people necessary to recall the mayor. So I I think we're in a death spiral, and I think think Chicago's in probably the worst state that it's ever been in in a a very long time. But I don't see us coming out of it. I don't see us pulling out of the tailspin very soon. Mays, do you think that there's not the political will in the state house to pass legislation to authorize this, or do you think there's not the political will of the people of Chicago to actually want to recall the mayor? Which, where do you think there's not the political will? Dan, Dan I'll be honest with you. I don't think there's the political will to do it in the in the Illinois state house. I think in the Illinois, I think in the Illinois state house, Dan, um, Mayor Emanuel still wields a lot of power with that money and that financial stick that he has. And so I think very few people are, are, are willing to take on the mayor just yet. I don't think he's weak enough. But what I do think is happening is I think what LaShawn Ford's bill does is present a litmus test for a lot of the legislators to determine whether they're with the will of the people or with the will of the politicians. So I think it could be very interesting if the question is posed. So, Mays, uh, you've been one of those individuals who's or been an organizer of some of the protests, uh, young people in particular. Is there uh, an emerging new leadership within the African-American community, among African-American families in the city of Chicago, 
that maybe is going to take a bit of a different tack, a bit of a different direction than some of the the black office holders, than some of the, the black civil rights leaders of a uh, bygone era. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that, Dan. I think that the premise has traditionally been in our in the black community particularly is to kind of go along and get along, find your space, and just rest in, 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 in the complacency of what's been going on. I think as we look at this new generation of leadership, um, they are now taking an approach of we're not, we're not Jesse Jackson, we're not that old black leadership, and so you're going to have to deal with us. And so I think one of the things that the uh, administration and even the political system in Chicago is not recognizing is that the status quo is not going to work. I, I liken this almost to a the emergence of the Tea Party on the Republican side, mm. where there is ultimately becoming a revolt. And as, again, this LaShawn Ford uh, bill could be truly a litmus test that could really, really shake up the party, because if the question is posed, we know that everybody in the political and every regular person would be would be on board for at least having the opportunity to recall. But will the elected officials accept that and do what the people want, or are they going to circle the wagons and protect? Because again, if they open this door up, does it open the door up for recall elections for themselves as well? Mays, do you see a, an individual political leader rising that could rival Mayor Emanuel if this kind of movement were to push forward, where there would be a spokesperson, uh, a reform-type spokesperson, who would rise up and say, I'm going to give an alternative vision for the city of Chicago? I think, Dan, that there are a few of us who are thinking along those lines. I, I can't lie and say that I haven't considered it myself. Um, but we must, I think that you're looking at quite a few people that have probably waited on the sidelines or sat back or didn't think it was possible uh, watching these events unfold. And I think that realistically, I don't know if Mayor Emanuel is going to get thrown out of office, but I do think that the demand for him to keep his promise of not to not run again is going to be a resounding call. So I, it'll be very interesting to see. What about uh, Cook County State Attorney Anita Alvarez? Uh, Done. What? Toast. Fire. <laughs> gone. Okay. Cook, her goose is cooked. She, she has nothing left. Um, it's interesting. This this race is going to be very interesting. I'm looking to see when do Madigan and Burt pick up stakes and move to uh, Donna Moore, because we know they're not going to go to Kim Fox unless they're trying to save their hides. Um, but, yeah, I think Anita Alvarez is toast. What, what, a, what, what about, I mean, what we're really talking about, though, too, Mays, is the Chicago Democrat power structure in not just in the city, but in the state that has lorded it over the state for so long. You just mentioned two of the names, Madigan and Burke. You could throw Cullerton in there and, uh, you know, all the dailies and Rom and all the crime families and their representatives. And I guess my question is, is there an opportunity, do you think, for so, to, the, the, the uh, African-American families in particular, but the Chicago in general, to consider something that maybe they haven't considered in about a century, to make a clean break from the representatives of all those crime families I've just described. <laughs> and, and let me say this. I don't think, Dan, that we're at the point where black Chicago will make the move to the Republican Party. What I will tell you is I do believe that uh, there is the op- you are looking at the time when the black community may jettison these guys from the party. Again, again, with Sean Ford's bill, if properly positioned, places a litmus test. I mean, you have to ask Mike Madigan, who is the leader of the Democratic Party, of which the black community is the most loyal and faithful base. Yep. Where are you on this Laquan McDonald issue? And if the people are calling for a recall, really, and and, and the people we're talking about are black, where do you stand, Mr. Speaker? Uh, again, Dan, I, I think it's really going to be important that uh, we'll know how this is going to go, because if it goes to the Rules Committee, then they're playing Protect the King. If it hits the floor and it's a full vote, then, boy, some people are going to be in some real tough spots. And how would you discount that likelihood? How likely do you think it is that Madigan would make a move uh, against Emmanuel here, uh, given that, on the other hand, he wants to keep Emmanuel on his side, say, in, in negotiations with Bruce Rauner. He doesn't want Emmanuel necessarily to be alienated, um, as there are big issues that uh, the new governor, Rauner, wants to negotiate with both the speaker and then, of course, the mayor of Chicago also. I think the speaker has the mayor in quite a... I think the mayor is not in a, position, in a power position right now. I think he's got a looming teacher strike that he needs 
Springfield to help pull through, so he's not really in a position to make a lot of decisions. I think uh, the speaker is going to have to really, I mean, but I think, again, this bill is going to probably go directly to rules so that they don't have a challenge because, again, it would put so many, it's not so much the speaker, but the members that it would put in a pickle. Because, again, how are you a representative of Chicago and you vote for the uh, the recall? The mayor then, you know, the, the premise for black elected officials has to been has been to be punished for for not being for not following the rules. So that's what is still, I think, the sticking point. All right. He is Mays Jackson. He's WVON political commentator, WVN radio in Chicago, political editor of the Chicago Defender, longtime political operative. Mays, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for your listeners for taking my for taking the time.